Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode. My name is Sergio Gabor and I'm a quality engineer in the automotive industry. Today we'll take a look at some xenon bulbs to find out which is the best and if you should consider replacing them even if they're still working. If you watched my previous episode, you'll probably know that I recently got a xenon equipped headlight, so now we can also test this type of products. There are a lot of HID bulbs on the market with a pretty big price range. So in this episode I want to find out if there's a difference between them. Do you really get more light output by choosing a top of the line product or is this just nonsense? Well, sit back, relax and let me perform some tests to find out. The products that we'll test are from the Osram Xena Arc range. The classic, the original, the cool blue intense and the Nightbreaker laser. Of course, we'll also compare the test results with the factory installed Philips bulb that came with the car and is still running. First, we'll start with a short overview of this technology and of the products, after which we'll test the light output and the color temperature of each bulb, and we'll finish up with an endurance test. Let's get started. So, what is a xenon bulb? Well, these are also called high-intensity discharge lamps, which should give you an idea on how they work. Basically, inside the bulb, you have a glass envelope. That's the bubble you see right here. On the top and bottom of this envelope, there are two electrodes between which an electric arc is formed. In order to maintain a steady and bright electric arc, the envelope is filled with xenon gas and metallic salts, which vaporized when exposed to the high temperature of this arc. The science behind this technology is much more complex and will not explore it in such detail. But you may be wondering what are the advantages and disadvantages of xenon lamps. Well, some of the advantages are that the light output is higher compared to a classic halogen lamp and they also require less power to operate. Most automotive xenon bulbs require 35 watts to run, while halogen bulbs require around 55 watts. Another advantage is that they last longer compared to incandescent lamps. Xenon bulbs do not have a filament that tends to fail, but we'll discuss more about xenon bulb failure later in this video, because they can also fail one way or another. Now, this sounds pretty awesome, but they also have some disadvantages. First is the run-up time, and this refers to the warming up phase that this bulb need to reach their full brightness. It takes approximately 20 to 30 seconds to reach optimal light output. Second disadvantage is glare. As these lamps offer more light output compared to halogen lamps, there is a high risk of blinding oncoming traffic. So in Europe, all cars that come equipped with xenon headlights must also have headlight cleaning systems and automatic beam leveling control. Which leads me to the third disadvantage, cost. Xenon headlights are much more expensive to buy and maintain. In order to operate these bulbs, a dedicated control unit is needed, which in some cases can be very expensive and tends to fail just as often as the bulbs themselves. Besides this, good quality products like the ones that we'll test today can cost over 100 euros for a pair. Compared to a good pair of halogens, which should go as high as 30 euros, it's a pretty big difference. <laughs> but we can argue that xenons last longer, so you get a return on your investment. In any case, that's enough with the theory, let's take a look at the products. First is the Ostram Xenarc Classic. This is the least expensive product in this video and I believe that it's also the only product discontinued by Ostram because it's not listed on their website. However, it's still widely available and to be honest, I never understood what's the difference between the classic and the original and that's why I decided to include it in this episode. The box doesn't say much, therefore details are scarce. So, I'm curious how this will perform, but I don't have high expectations. Next is the Osram Xenarc Original. This is a little more expensive than the Classic and the details are still available on Osram's website. According to the manufacturer, the key takeaway is that this product offers 4 years warranty and that it meets OEM quality requirements. Well, in my opinion, all products should meet these requirements, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> Other than that, Osram fumbles about with their specifications for this product by first mentioning that the color temperature is 4500 Kelvin and then mentions again that it's 4100 Kelvin. <laughs> yeah, good. Good advertising. Moving on to the Osram Xenar Cool Blue Intense. This product is advertised as having a light color temperature of 6000 Kelvin and 20% more light output compared to the minimum value required by European regulations. 
so this product should provide cooler light compared to the rest and be a bit brighter. Osram also offers the Cool Blue Boost, which has up to 7000 Kelvin, but that's not road legal, so I'm not including it in this episode. But I'll give you my opinion on those later. The final product is the Osram Xenarc Nightbreaker Laser. This is advertised as having 200% extra brightness and 20% more light color. More light color? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but I guess it has 20% cooler light temperature. <laughs> In any case, as I mentioned in other episodes, the 200% more light output is compared to the minimum value required by law. And according to the regulations, this value is 6250 candelas, which translates to 694 lux at 3 meters. Well, I'm not sure if that's a stretch, but we'll find out after the light output test, which is coming next. In order to test the light output, I've positioned the headlight at 3 meters from the projection surface and the power supply is set to 14 volts. The reading will be made with a dedicated lux meter and the camera was set to manual mode to avoid any automatic color compensation during recording so that we get a pretty good idea of the difference in the light color. Also, I'm using my phone to measure the color temperature, but it's not a calibrated device, so the results may be unreliable. After we'll perform the test, we'll compare the data side by side and we'll discuss the outcome. But while I'm performing this, please allow me to present the sponsor for this episode, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with some of the best educational content available. Skillshare has thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including web development, marketing, videography and much more. In my opinion, online learning is the best way to start working on a new skill or just polish one that you already acquired. In my pursuit to have better quality content here on YouTube, I came across software tools that looked very overwhelming. But with the guidance offered by classes on Skillshare, mastering software tools becomes very easy. But that's not all they offer and in fact you'll probably find anything that you're interested in learning. All content is carefully crafted with learning in mind, so there are no ads and the new classes are added frequently so you can stay focused and enjoy new perspectives on the things you want to learn. The first 1000 people that click the link in the description will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare and can start enjoying their content right away, so don't miss this opportunity. Many thanks to Skillshare for making learning fun and for sponsoring this video. So, let's get back to our test and see what exactly happened. Well, the factory installed Philips had a maximum light output of 806 lux, which is comparable to a normal halogen tested in previous episodes. I was very surprised to see such a low reading from a xenon bulb as these are typically much brighter. But let's not forget that this bulb could be at least 10 years old and there's no way of knowing for sure without the traceability data from the manufacturer. In any case, the next product is the Osram Classic, which had a maximum light output of, <laughs> get this, 1847 lux, over 1000 lux more than the old Philips bulb. This is an increase of nearly 130%. An incredible result coming from the least expensive product tested today. Next is the Osram Original, which had a maximum light output of 1703 lux. So, a little less than the classic, but still better than the old Philips bulb. The Osram Cool Blue Intense had a maximum light output of 1780 lux. Slightly better than the original, but less than the classic. And finally, the Osram Nightbreaker Laser, which should be the most powerful. This had a maximum light output of 1905 lux. So indeed, it had the best result. However, it was also the most expensive and only 3% brighter than the classic bulb, which is half the price. <laughs> You might have noticed that the projection surface is divided into 10 zones. This is to help me measure the peripheral illumination of the bulbs, as not only the brightest hotspot is important. So, here are the areas measured, and these are the values recorded in lux. The hotspot is the brightest area of the projection, but otherwise we can see that the classic bulb is having a lower reading towards the edge of the beam compared to other Osram products. Regarding the light temperature, we can see that the old Philips bulb has the coolest light temperature, followed by the cool blue intense and the nightbreaker laser. The classic and the original have almost the same color and it's very hard to distinguish between them. 
Before we decide which is the best, we still need to test a very important characteristic of these products, the endurance. As explained earlier, xenons produce an electric arc to generate light and do not have a metallic filament that gets incandescent like classic halogens. However, the electric arc is only stable and bright enough when enclosed in a glass bubble known as the envelope. The content of this envelope depends on the manufacturer and on the specific use of the lamp, but in order to keep it from leaking, two seals are used for the electrodes, and if these seals get damaged, the envelope loses its controlled environment and the lamp fails. In order to test this, I made a machine that drops the bulbs repeatedly, simulating vibrations caused by potholes and damaged roads. Of course, xenons can fail from other reasons as well, like excessive humidity inside the headlight or voltage fluctuations, but these are external factors and do not depend on the manufacturing quality of the product. So, as you can see, I had to test each bulb individually because I only have one ballast. This meant that the testing machine was modified to meet this new requirement, and because of this modification, the frequency with which the bulbs drop is lower than in previous episodes and the test lasted way longer. I mean, days longer. <laughs> but anyway, it's done and here are the results. As you can see, there's not much of a difference between these products. So, from an endurance point of view, I would say that these are pretty much alike. There is one product made by Osram that could be better in this test called the Xenarc Ultra Life, but we'll test that one in a future episode, comparing it with other products to see which lasts longer. So, what conclusions can we take from this test? Well, in my opinion, there are two very important aspects that need to be considered. One, if you have an old xenon bulb that is still working but it doesn't seem too bright, change it with a new one. As you see, it made a big difference. Second, you don't need to buy the most expensive product to get the best results. Of course, I'm talking about the Osram Classic, which blew me away with its performance. It's only 3% less bright than the Nightbreaker laser, but less than half the cost. I'm not sure if it got discontinued or not, but if you need a replacement, this is your best option. The Osram Original has the least light output from this comparison, and it's a little more expensive than the Classic. I would only consider buying this product if the Osram Classic is not available and the budget is limited. The Osram Cool Blue Intense is 4 or 5% brighter than the Osram Original, but the key feature of this product is the cooler light temperature. Although to my eyes, the difference is minimal. Osram also offers the Cool Blue Boost, which has an even cooler light temperature, but because these are illegal, availability is not great and the price is much higher. If you would like to see a comparison between these two, I'll leave a link to a video in the description. And while making this episode, I discovered that Osram also launched the Cool Blue Intense second generation, which they say it has 6200 Kelvin. I guess that I'll test that in the next episode, but I'm not getting my hopes up that we'll see any differences. Finally, the Osram Nightbreaker laser, which has the best light output from this comparison. So, if you need the absolute best product from Osram, this is it. The manufacturer mentions that this product offers plus 200% brightness compared to the minimum legal requirement. But I took the time to read these regulations and at 3 meters from the projection surface the minimum value recorded must be 694 lux. The Nightbreaker laser had 1905 lux, so that equals to a 174% gain. Well, at least they're close enough. Probably with a new headlight, we would get closer to the advertised 200%. So, that's all I have for you today. If you liked this episode, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video as it helps the channel grow and allows me to make more videos. I'm planning to test products from other manufacturers as well to see how they stack up. So, if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. This video was made possible with the help of my Patreon members, which are absolutely the best, and I cannot thank them enough for supporting me. If you wish to support me as well, you can do so at the link in the description, and you'll get early access to all my videos, and you'll be included in all my giveaways by default. <laughs> Also, I would like to thank the sponsor for this episode, Skillshare, for the cooperation and support. If you want to learn something new, go check them out. By supporting them, you're supporting me. 
Until next time, thank you very much for watching and I wish you have a great day. Bye-bye.